Hey there Dark and Darker fans! Let's begin this video by recognizing that the success of playtest number 5 was the result of a Herculean effort put forth by the Iron Mace team. Beset by legal and DDoS attacks, Iron Mace still managed to release a playable and enjoyable game. That said, I think playtest number 5 has highlighted several issues with the game's core mechanics. Now I want to be clear, I am not attacking the issues that Iron Mace did not have control over, such as server stability. I am talking about core mechanics that exist in the game and, ostensibly, would have still existed in a same or similar state without external influences. Let's begin. The failure of dungeon diving. Dungeon diving, or dungeon delving, is the term I use to describe playing more than one map during a single raid. This is accomplished by taking down portals to further levels and was the original vision of the game set out by Iron Mace. During Playtest 5, the first iteration of the Ruins map initially provided very few escape portals and heavily encouraged players to descend into the updated Crypts map via the stairwells. Unfortunately, by the time that the stairwells became active, most players were either dead, completely out of heals, or already had enough loot to be dissuaded against descending further. This resulted in no one really going to the crypts, and a multitude of social media posts asking, or demanding, that the old crypts map be returned, which Iron Mace obligingly re-implemented in its first patch. The ruins then became Dark and Darker's second standalone map, along with the Goblin Caves, since it no longer provided access to other levels via down portals. Now, this isn't the first time that Iron Mace has received pushback from the community regarding down portals. Reaching my memory back to playtest number 3, Iron Mace made significant changes to down portal availability and reduced the number of both single and group escape portal spawns. The intent was clear, the devs wanted you and your group to take down portals. However, after several days of community resistance and backlash, Iron Mace relented and returned the usual number of escape portal spawns. As both playtest 3 and 5 have displayed, Forcing players to use the dungeon diving system has thus far not proven popular. Many players clearly enjoy being able to play one map and dependably extract. Based on the community's response, Iron Mace needs to reflect heavily on this because it really is at odds with their original dungeon diving vision. Hybrid classes are comparatively weak. The Bard is clearly a long ways from being fleshed out, and I am almost positive they will receive buffs or an extensive rework when Early Access launches. That said, I think the Bard's current implementation underscores a future problem with hybrid classes. For the moment, let's agree that the Bard is a hybrid form of Fighter, Cleric, and Rogue. This assumption stems from the Bard having a form of healing and group buffs, being able to use the Falchion, using the Hand Crossbow, having good mobility, and having good interaction speeds. The problem is, the Bard inherited all the mediocre qualities of those other three classes while receiving none of the best qualities. For example, the Bard's heal is fine out of combat, but it does nothing during combat and I would prefer just having cleric heals. The Bard's melee damage is fine, but I'd prefer having a fighter with a longsword. The Bard's dungeoneering skill is fine, but I'd prefer having a double jump rogue with lockpick and hide. If you can't give hybrid classes some of the best qualities of their comparison classes, the hybrid class is doomed because other classes just do it better. This is especially true in three-man teams where each character has a very defined role in which they excel. A hybrid class like the Bard excels at nothing and therefore adds questionable value. Imagine if the Bard's healing song actually healed all of your hit points and not just your resting HP. At that point, I would definitely consider bringing the Bard over a Cleric in a three-man team. However, outside of playing as a secondary support or while playing in a duo, the Bard has thus far proven that hybrid classes do not add enough to three-man teams to make them a realistic inclusion for most players. Casual players might not enjoy the game. We'll have to wait for the playtest data release on this one, but it is my impression that there were far fewer casual players present in the game during playtest number 5. In previous playtests, I could run confidently into fights knowing that I was likely about to destroy folks who don't play nearly as much as I do. This playtest, I had to completely adjust the way I played and respect that most of my opponents knew how to play the game with skill. In part, I think this is the result of how Iron Mace distributed the game. Having to download torrenting software, figure out how to use it, patching, decrypting tweets, I think most casual players weren't interested enough to go through the effort during playtest 5. 
less, I think player numbers dropped off dramatically compared to previous playtests, and the only remaining players were passionate, dedicated, and highly skilled. This is why most streamers who farmed solo hell in previous playtests were playing goblin caves this time. Now, is having a large casual population a real issue? Well, it turns out, kind of. Most people who thought they were good at the game were actually just good at killing noobs and casual players. This made the game fun for them, but not for the people they were killing. So, in reality, it wasn't just the casuals who didn't go through the effort of accessing playtest number 5. It was casual players who didn't have fun during previous playtests who didn't bother accessing playtest number 5. So while I am hopeful for the game's future, I am a little worried that Dark and Darker is on the precipice of becoming the next Escape from Tarkov, where chads make the game miserable for casuals. Clearly, Iron Mace has a lot of work ahead of them regardless of what their player base thinks are existing issues. I think most players trust the developer's process, and Iron Mace has proven to be responsive to the community. Therefore, I am 100% still looking forward to what comes out next. If you appreciate content like this, please drop a like and subscribe to be notified when more content is released. See you in the dungeon!